Last year, when I released my comparison between the MacBook Air M1 and the Surface Pro X, one of the most common comments on that video, which is still my most watched video to date, was, sure, but can't you run Windows 10 on ARM through Parallels on MacBook, the MacBook Air and get better performance? While the benchmarks might be better, my response is, even if benchmarks are better, that doesn't mean that you'll get a better experience. I wouldn't say that the best Mac OS performance was a Hackintosh desktop PC, even if it does perform better than an iMac or even a Mac Pro. Regardless, the concept of running Windows 10 on the MacBook Air still intrigued me, and I was interested to see how well Parallel's desktop worked. And then I remembered that Apple's been able to run Windows 10 on its devices in the past through Boot Camp. Now, unfortunately, Boot Camp isn't available on the new MacBook Airs with M1 or any M1 chip. But I do have this Intel Mac from last year that I figured I would be able to compare boot camp, the Boot Camp experience on it to the Parallels experience on the new MacBook Air. So in this video, we're going to compare the entire process, including the process of setting up Parallels and Boot Camp on either device, so you can see what the experience is actually like. Then I'm going to run similar programs in both to show what the performance is like and what the overall experience is like running Windows 10 on either of these devices. Thanks to 9to5Mac for providing this guide. So install Parallels Desktop 16 for M1 Mac technical preview. So I'm gonna to go to my account. Thankfully I've logged in before. So we need an, a Mac computer with an Apple M1 chip and we need an ARM-based operating system installation image. In this case, it's Windows 10 on ARM. So first we're gonna install, let's go ahead and download. And then over here with Bootcamp, we basically need 64 gigs or more free storage space. And then we need to, let's see, an external flash drive, unless we're using a Mac that doesn't need a flash drive to install Windows, which I'm pretty sure we don't. We need a 64-bit version of Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro on an ISO. So let's let's open up Boot Camp. Okay, Boot Camp Assistant can help install Windows Microsoft Windows on an Intel-based Mac. So let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so we're going to set up Boot Camp. We will allocate some storage. We don't need quite that much. Let's just allocate, let's say, 100-ish gigs. Let's install. I've got plenty of battery. So now I'm going to find the Windows 10 on ARM ISO. Okay, so you can register for insider.windows.com. I'm already a Windows Insider. So then you can go to this, this link right here, microsoft.com, software download Insider Preview ARM64, and you can download the ARM64 Insider Preview. So now we'll download Windows 10 Insider Preview. So on the left here, we installed Windows 10 and now the computer seems to be shutting down. Okay, so this is an 8.6 gig ISO or VHDX. Okay, Windows 10 setup is starting on the left here. Okay, I will say I don't have a product key. I separately have product keys of Windows, but I can, I can do that when I activate. And now it should just be like a more traditional Windows 10 installation, like same experience. Maybe I need to pick this up in a little bit because I've got 8.6 gigs that I need to download. So I'll come back shortly. Okay, well that was fun. So it only took me an hour, but I was able to install the eight gig ISO of the Windows 10 on ARM Insider Preview onto the, my MacBook Air. Now granted, it would have taken maybe three quarters as much time to install the 5.8 gigs of Windows 10 ISO on this device, on my, my MacBook Pro, but I already had it downloaded. And so just keep that in mind when you're doing it. You're going to need some lead time in order to download the ISO. Okay, now that Boot Camp has done its thing, on the left here you'll see that I've installed Windows 10 and now I'm going through the setup process. So I'm going to start doing that while on the right, I'm going to start going through the process of installing Windows 10 through Parallels. Go into Parallels Desktop. Create new, I'm going to go to Windows 10. I will primarily use Windows for productivity. Continue. Windows 10, it's going to install on my hard drive. 
Okay, we've got the installation assistant pulled up on the right here, so we're going through that process. Okay, so we have it set up on the right here, which is great, but I didn't go through the traditional Windows setup process, and so it doesn't have like a lot of my account information already in, so I need to do that. Okay, now I'm setting up the bootcamp installer on the right, or sorry, on the left. Okay, on the left here, we're still installing bootcamp. So notably, it, is been, it has been significantly slower installing bootcamp on the left because it's creating all the drivers needed. Um, there's positives to this and negatives to this, but I am in parallels doing stuff already. I didn't have to go through a setup process over here, which saved me a lot of time. Okay, so now it's asking me to restart our system. Windows, or, oh, come on, that, that lag. Oh gosh. I feel like I'm just dragging something across the floor. In general, so far, it feels like bootcamp is a lot smoother and more consistent. Notably, the default scroll with the MacBook Pro running bootcamp is um, the old version of scroll where you pull down to move down on the page and you swipe up to move up on the page. Whereas on the MacBook Air, it's more traditional reverse scrolling that we'd expect out of more modern devices. I prefer the more traditional or the more traditional reverse scroll. So now that we have Windows set up on both of these devices, you can actually see side by side what the experience of using them is like. Scrolling performance on either one is uh, night and day. Scrolling on the MacBook Pro running bootcamp is so much smoother. Let's go ahead and just try and watch a YouTube video. Three, two, one, click. Okay, the timing was actually pretty similar. Let's hit full screen on both. Okay, so the MacBook Pro is significantly faster than, than the MacBook Air. The color of the two are, is very different as well. So notably, on the MacBook Pro, I currently have the uh, True Tone set up, whereas I turned it off on my MacBook Air because I've been editing videos. That makes sense on the MacBook Air that the picture would be a little bit less uh, saturated. But it's interesting, what I didn't realize is that True Tone would still work in boot camp. It looks like it's got a significantly more saturated image just side by side. The trackpad response on the MacBook Pro seems to be a little bit stiffer. It doesn't, it doesn't really give as much as the MacBook Air. Then again, since the MacBook Air has the customizations in software, I could basically go into the settings of Mac OS and change how much response that the trackpad has. I need to activate Windows before I can personalize my PC and change the background from the razor blade stealth background. I have a few copies of Windows 10 that I use for building computers, but I don't really have any interest in activating Windows on this right now, because this is more for just experiments. So notably on the MacBook Pro, um, the key commands are more native to Windows. So commands works like a Windows key, option works like an alt key, and control works like a control key. Whereas function allows you to switch between the touch bar for, for media controls, um, and then the actual function keys. So if I go into bootcamp, bootcamp control panel, then I can control some of the settings in the control panel. So here we go, keyboard, use all F1, 2, F2, etc. keys as standard function keys. Let's go ahead and hit apply. So now, the function keys are the default and holding down the function button is what switches it back into the uh, controls. Whereas in parallels, the function keys just mirror whatever you have set in your Mac OS. Now, obviously one benefit to having parallels instead of bootcamp is being able to easily get out of it. Where bootcamp actually you know, runs on bare metal, it actually runs on the hardware. It is not virtualized like parallels is. So Bar Parallels sits inside a virtual machine, and so as a result, you can easily switch back to macOS by just a four finger swipe on the trackpad or, or whatever. So just a little bit of keyboard response time. So I'm gonna hit the command key, which is functioning as the Windows key to see how fast the Windows uh, search bar pops up or the home, uh, the home menu pops up. It is very fast on Bootcamp 
it is not so fast on parallels. And the reason probably is because parallels basically has to listen for whether that command key is being combined with any Mac shortcuts. So like command space, which will open up Spotlight. Um, obviously that's being done in Mac OS. And so that extra delay, I don't know if it's because of the wait to see if there's another hotkey, but it is a little bit more frustrating for me. So I'm gonna open up Microsoft Excel on both of these. I'm gonna hit command to open up search bar, type in Excel and hit enter. Okay, so notably one benefit of parallels is benefit or uh, you know difficulty with parallels is that it actually searches your existing Mac for programs that already sit on Mac, uh, on the Mac. So in this case, I searched for Excel and it's going to use the Mac version of Excel first. If you're specifically just looking for a version of Excel, this might be fine for you. For me, I specifically, one of the reasons why I would opt for Parallels or Windows within with Windows on my Mac is for the Windows version of Excel. I'll do the same thing on my MacBook Pro. Type in Excel and go. Oh, it, <laughs> that program opened up a lot faster. Okay, let's go ahead and just open up a blank workbook in either side. I will go ahead and I'm going to build a quick financial model. Let's start with the MacBook Pro. Function down arrow works perfectly as a page down key, which is excellent. All of the keys work properly. Let's do all the function keys work properly. F2 works great. F1 works great, much to my ear. Okay, let's see if F4 works. Um, let's do that. F4 works great. Okay. This is bearable. It's like, I would probably need a better keyboard for it, but it's actually pretty livable. I'm not the biggest fan of the touch bar. Um, I think it's a little bit frustrating to not have the physical feedback when I'm touching something, but as far as like compatibility and speed, everything seems to be working perfectly fine. It, it's fast, it's smooth, um, and if I wasn't, if I didn't know this it was a MacBook Pro, it feels like just as fast as most, win most Windows computers. So let's go ahead and let's try the MacBook Air instead and see if I still feel the same way. So right off to the bat, as soon as I started typing, there was a short delay as it kind of caught up with me. Same thing with pressing tab, let's see. Um, so the control button works properly in Microsoft Excel, which is good. Just kidding, it doesn't work properly. So hitting control and, hit, and hitting the over the right arrow, it just freezes the system completely. And my guess is um, Parallels is trying to basically look for a hotkey that, that the MacBook or that Mac OS can recognize. And as a result, it's just not doing anything. Command set the same thing, same issue. The option key is working as a control key with a little bit of delay. The option key doesn't work as a copy. Left option is working as an alt key, but right option is not working as an alt key. Now control shift arrow is working. Control arrow is not working, but control shift arrow is working. So for some reason. Okay, now we should be able to make our customers. Okay, let's see if function, function page down, or function down arrow does do page down. It is a little bit laggy, but now I should be able to drag some customers down. Okay, oh, control, up arrow, looks like it activates the windows in 
Mac OS, so I can't use control up arrow. Yeah, the control key's not working, it's not great. I wonder if there's settings in parallels that allow, allow me to fix this. So it looks like we can fully customize all the keyboard shortcuts to be remapped to something else within Windows. So with enough work, I could probably get the experience to be a little bit better. It just doesn't want to play ball. It It's slow. Look at opening up Google Chrome. Wow. I just uh, And then typing is slow. I hit enter on Twitter, here it goes. Okay, so here's the bottom line. The concept of being able to run Windows 10 on ARM on a MacBook Air with an M1 is a really cool concept. And in practice, I wouldn't really recommend it. If you had absolutely critical workflow that had to be dependent on Windows 10, so maybe, for example, you're a developer and you need to see how your application works on Windows 10, maybe this will be like a good bridge for you, but it's not going to run nearly as well as just about any other true hardware. And yes, even if it does technically benchmark better than the Surface Pro X, I don't think the real experience of utilizing it will be anywhere in comparison to the Surface Pro X. So if I had my choice, then I would probably prefer still having Boot Camp. I have no idea if Apple plans on releasing Boot Camp ever again for MacBooks, because frankly, I mean, I don't think they probably could get it to work in their first round, and that's why they got rid of it in new versions of the MacBook Air. I wasn't a Mac user for long enough to ever get the experience of using Windows 10 on Boot Camp, but the fact is, is it is so incredibly smooth, the experience is great, hardware compatibility seems to be all there, and frankly, all that I'm missing is a true function row, and I think this would be an incredibly good Windows 10 device, And if the keyboard's a little off. If I was using an external keyboard, then it would solve a lot of my issues. So I don't think parallel is, Parallels is nearly quite to the point that Boot Camp was, but I wouldn't expect that considering it's just a virtual machine. Hopefully, Apple's able to find a solution in the future. But until then, I'm going to need to just keep on using Windows 10 devices side by side with my MacBook Air M1. So as long as I have workflows that are dependent on Windows, then I'm going to have to keep on using them. I really like the MacBook Pro from last year with the Intel chips, and I wish that there was still a solution for us. But unfortunately, this device is, seems to be going the way of the dinosaur, and we won't likely see another MacBook with an Intel chip anytime in the next few years, if not decades. Thank you for watching NOISO. I hope you like this comparison between uh, Parallels and Bootcamp, and it helps you in your personal workflow somehow. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you think about Parallels, and I'll catch you in the next one.